Hey everyone, this is Josh back with Cardboard Chronicles. In this episode, I'm speaking with Ross. Ross is going to talk about his Donovan Mitchell collection. He's going to talk about his love of the retro and legend sets from the late 90s, the autograph sets specifically. Uh, he's going to reveal his number one card in his Donovan Mitchell collection that he recently picked up. Huge card. He can't wait to show that one off, so I'm excited for him to be able to do that. And he's going to tell us the story of when he met Donovan Mitchell after a game and showed him some of his cards. And once again, don't forget to check out howtocollectcards.com. Uh, we're still helping everybody become more successful in the hobby much quicker. Uh, so if you want to learn more about that, go to the website, howtocollectcards.com. We're still giving away the dictionary for free. Uh, we've got a lot of support so far. A lot of people are really excited about what we're offering. We've had a ton of people join. Uh, so I'm excited to speak with more of you and, and uh, get you going on helping you guys out. So please check that out. Here's Ross. How's it going, man? Good, man. How are you, Josh? Good. Really excited to have you on it. We've been uh, setting this up, setting this up for a while, and I'm excited. Yeah, appreciate it, man. Thanks for asking. Of course, dude. So why don't you start us? The, Go ahead. I got the invite, and it was like a golden ticket <laughs> to Willy Wonka's, man. <laughs> no, man. This is you're, you're awesome, dude. This is gonna be good. So why don't you start us off? Uh, tell us about yourself, your your background in the hobby. Yeah, man. So uh, 1992, uh, Shaquille O'Neal was drafted. And uh, that was kind of my draw into the hobby. Uh, as fate would have it, went to the local card shop. Luckily, my dad was like, yep, we got to go hunt you some Shaquille O'Neal rookies. Bought three plaques of Fleer with the old blue border on the side, 90, you know, 92, 93, uh, down the side. Uh, first pack, I hit the shack, and I was hooked. <laughs> Literally, first pack. Nice. You know, And those are a dime a dozen today, obviously, but... You never forget kind of that initial moment, just opening the pack. I can almost see the entire scenery around me. I, I forget where it was, but I have like vivid memories of opening the pack. So that was kind of the the initial for me. So does your uh, did your dad like continue with it with you? A little bit. He wasn't big into it. He did a little bit of football when he was growing up, but nothing substantial. Um, but big sports guy. Um, growing up in Ohio, he was a huge Buckeye huge Ohio State fan, um, you know, any football, any Sunday, for sure, and then NBA games when we could, you know, just yeah. checking out a game a year, typically. So what happened after that? What What's, like, the progression where, to where we are now? Yeah, so, I mean, that, you kind of get that bug initially, and I kind of miss those good old days because it didn't matter what you got. You were just excited to get your player more so than, um, you know, chasing all the stuff that's out there today. Um, but from that point on, it just kind of turned into saving my money when I could, um, going and buying packs whenever I could. Um, and that carried on honestly all the way through, um, to now, to be honest. Um, it's funny though, looking back because like a lot of people, um, I kind of took a break, but I never really did because anytime I was home from college, I would go to the local card shop when it was going on, uh, you know, or when they'd have a show or to different shows around the Michigan area. That's where I lived at the time. Um, but I think I bought all the wrong things in all those years. Uh, I remember LeBron's year in particular, I was fixated on SPX, you know, and now you, you, you know, obviously like to have those, but of all the things it's like, why SPX? I don't know. Um, I remember buying box after box after box to try and get his SPX rookie. That was like the pinnacle to me, uh, in Oh three. And then throughout the years, just random boxes right like three four boxes when i could and open them just to kind of have that joy um nothing of substance from those times um but kind of kept me hooked and mm -hmm. kept me in it um obviously when you're in college money's tight you don't have as much but i was always still intrigued by the hobby probably didn't follow it as close as i should have uh would have a lot more lebrons right now and some <laughs> other things but still part of the fun i guess it's pretty rare to have someone that, that didn't leave because I feel like every guest I've had has like left for a substantial amount of time. What, what do you attribute that to for you not leaving? Um, I just always loved the art of it, and I've always been a collector at heart. And I think um, that's such a big 
part of it to me. So you hear a lot of the investment stuff, and I'm sure we'll talk on that at some point, but you hear the investment stuff, and for me, I never looked at it that way. It was more about the chase of getting whatever you were after or excited about. Um, and in those lean times, I'll call them, it was just about still getting a box, opening a box and having that joy of, of the auto or you know whatever you were to pull. And so that was kind of the, the fun part that kept drawing me in. And then the art of it too. I mean, they've come a long way, but even some of the old school stuff, base cards that aren't worth anything today are still some of the best action shots and some of the best looking cards ever produced. Um, I mean, it's just almost stunning, right? I mean, we have all the technology in the world today and I would argue that some of the older action shots are actually better yeah. because it captured more candid moments instead of like canned shots that they kind of get now. Right, stadium club, dude. Yeah, just crazy stuff. I mean, you look back and go, whoa, this was a base card? <laughs> yeah. You know? For sure. So I would say that more than anything. Uh, obviously, in college, money got tighter <laughs> just being in school. But um, I was still drawn in to all the wrong products, but <laughs> <laughs> still drawn in to, to opening stuff up. Uh, so I don't want to give too much away what you have today, but when did you sort of like ramp up to where you're at now? Um. I would say 2012, 2013, I really started back up. Uh, at the time, I was actually living in Phoenix, right in your backyard. Oh, nice. And um, went to a couple of shops out there on a whim one Saturday. Finally had some free time. Like up until that point, really from college and throughout, you never got to explore as much in it. I knew where the shows were in Michigan, knew where to look for them. But it was the first time I started going, whoa, there's still a bunch of shops that exist even around Phoenix, um, in different parts of the country as I was traveling more. And so I'd say that was the ramp up period. And then the big ramp up period, and this is kind of a shout out for him, but was moving to Denver. And I've been here almost four years now. And when I moved to Denver in 2015, uh, Mike stadium sports cards here in, in Aurora. Um, I walked in, he had thousands upon thousands of boxes, cases sealed, and it was nostalgia for me. It brought me back to being in Strongsville, Ohio, um, at George's Sports Cards, wall of wax, you know, take your pick, almost like a wall of every product produced in every sport. And so that was the real hook to, to kind of ramp back up. Um, and that's when the collection really started taking off, to be totally honest. Um, still had the totes and tubs of all the older stuff not worth as much. Um, never really left, but never did it as serious, I guess, as, as I do now. So what did you start collecting at, at that time, and what are you collecting now? So at that time, what, in 2012, 2013? Yeah, when you hit that nostalgia bug. Yeah, so at that time, I was drawn back in by football, honestly, which was so weird. Um, had bought some basketball throughout, but for whatever reason, nothing intrigued me as much in that time period as um, – some of the different football prospects that were coming out um, and, and different things like that. So Topps Chrome football was pretty big. 13 was a really lean year. I think Le'Veon Bell was the only good guy that year. Um, go figure, you know, 13, I'm collecting football, and there's a, a guy named Giannis that's uh, <laughs> kind, of, kind of a big deal. <laughs> uh, but that, that's kind of how it was for me. It wasn't just one sport specific. It was just the bug of opening and being in, involved in it. Um, I'd say the transition to basketball really took off in 2015, 2016, where I said, you know, I think there's more substance in basketball long term. Um, and I need to kind of like channel my collection one way or the other. Right. Uh, was never big in baseball, never big in, in hockey. But I was kind of in this pole between football and basketball. And you can't do it all. I mean, that's the one thing you realize in this hobby real quick. Yeah. Like you got to kind of pick your spots. Yeah, uh, and stick with them, and they'll evolve and change. But if you try and do everything, you'll you'll kind of do nothing, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, unless you just have unlimited funds and unlimited time. Sure. So, all right, dig, jump into like right now. What are you What are you after? What are you collecting? What's like the current Russ? What's he doing? Yeah. So, um, well, one one of the old school sets I loved. I got the bug one year at one of the shows in Michigan in '99. Uh, the Incredible set, and then Century Legends. Um, absolutely love both those sets. Um, I love iconic on-card autos. I think they like spell 
that era better than anything else. I think stickers have come out and kind of ruined the excitement of the card actually being in front of the athlete yeah. um, in, in completing it. So completing the incredible set was, was one of my first things. So got a couple pulled out here for you, but you're obviously familiar with your guy, Penny. Um, so then it kind of turned into how do I get that whole set in nine fives? And I've pretty much done that now for the base set. The golds, I kind of missed the boat on it. There's a couple of OGs around the country that were on those way, way early, like at its inception. Yeah. So obviously the Jordan, the Will, the Dr. J, they're all numbered to their jersey. The Penny. Um, I've seen them all except for the Penny. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen the Penny? No, I don't think it's been pulled yet. I, and it's like, I don't think anyone's ever seen it. Yeah. I bet it's still in boxes, man. I found a guy a couple of years ago that still had 10 cases sealed up down in Houston. And uh, I flew down there for work, and I bought one. Um, it's a crapshoot, though, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because at the time those boxes were fifty nine ninety nine, and you got one on card auto per box. But there was a ton of blue, and then even the wilts in that. There's only two hundred and twenty nine wilts, and then only thirteen of the golds. So, um, kind of became a resident expert on that set. And then Century Legends was the other one um, that I wanted to complete really, really bad. Um, completed that, uh, don't have the, you know, out of a hundred set, but, uh, have the base set with all the, all the main guys. So pretty excited about that. So how, how come Jordan doesn't have a, a base of the incredible? I never really thought about that until now. No, you know what I think it was? Everything of Jordan in that era was kind of numbered to 23 or less. Yeah. Um, almost everything. So I think they simply said, Hey, we get 23 autos of him per set. So <laughs> let's just give him a gold. Yeah. The gold, are, that gold is like an awesome card. It's iconic, man. Yeah, it's huge. It's cool. One cool thing though, out of the case I bought, I hit the Eric snow gold and I've never freaked out so much because when you're <laughs> peeling it, all you see is the gold yeah. and you can see the gold back, but you're kind of peeling it. And, uh, then it was Eric Snow. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, could it be? Like, there's six, seven guys that would just, like, be crazy. And it's Eric Eric Snow. I think he probably does signings at the local charity or something. I, it's, he's, it's Eric Snow. So, but it's cool. Out of 20. The Wilt is still, like, a sick. Wilt, Bill Russell, those cards are so sick. Oh, they're un, they're unbelievable. Yeah, I let's, pulled, let's uh, see them. Let's see them. Pulled one of the bills for you, just the base. This one, his auto streaked a little bit. That's not too bad. But just beautiful. Like the iconic headshot. Yep. So cool. Does he have a gold to six then? Yeah. What? It was on it was on eBay two months ago. Really? Yeah, it went for like eight grand or something like that. Which honestly I think is a steal for Yeah. Number card six? Card. That's crazy. It's less than yeah. half a wilt. Yeah. But I've seen them all except for Penny. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. I don't think anyone has. Yeah. That would be a crazy card. I wouldn't even know what to do if it came up. I would just like be frozen. Yeah. What would you do? I, don't, I mean, like, I'm not a big like one of one guy, but it's like that one is just the set that it belongs to is so iconic that I'd have to at least think go for it. Yeah. Yeah. And products aren't made like that anymore. I think that's why when I first started back into basketball hardcore, that was a big one for me um, because the nostalgia of opening that lunchbox um, you know, back when they were 60 bucks was, yeah. you couldn't, you couldn't make a better product. There's nothing like that in today's collecting. For sure. The base cards are nice too. Yeah. Um, what about the Donovan Mitchell stuff? Tell us about that. Oh man. So the Donovan Mitchell stuff, um, we see the sweater. So yeah, we got the spider. Um, he got big endorsements from Corver last night, which was really, really cool to see. I don't think, um, I've ever seen a vet like Kyle Corver say the kind of things he said about Donovan last night, which was pretty cool. Um, and those are kind of the traits I've seen all along. So when he came into the league, I was, I was a fan of his throughout college. He just kind of had that demeanor um, and kind of has that, like a, a lot of guys that come in the NBA are alpha dogs. They've been told their whole life they're the best. Mm -hmm. um, and they kind of act that way. Um, and I don't like that. <laughs> I think if you're the best, be humbly the best, but like you don't have to thump your chest and act in that way. And his humility was what I was attracted to first, to be totally honest. 
I just thought that he had leadership qualities that would take a team somewhere because he was just different. And then his his skills and gifts, when you hear him speak or when you talk to him about it, he's just like almost amazed that he can do the things he can do, um, which is which is like the vulnerability of it all, you know. And I think when people are vulnerable like that or willing to say, hey, I don't know – uh, if I was even going to make it, I didn't know. I think it just makes you better and, and gives you drive. And then the fact that he didn't win rookie of the year, um, I was kind of pissed, but I was actually happy because I think it gives him a chip going forward yeah. um, and something to continue to strive for. Um, but the real ramp up was obviously Prism came out, um, you know, set goals early that I just wanted to try and get some of the key ones out of there, to be totally honest. Um, and then after I got the one of one black out of that, it kind of just became an obsession <laughs> to try and get as many cool, unique ones of him as I could. Um, and can't even describe it to you, honestly, because it was never, I don't know if you've had these moments in the hobby, but it was never like a, I have to have every Donovan Mitchell card, but for some reason I just wanted to go for it and thought it would be really, really cool not to have every one, but to, to get the cornerstone ones. And I've never done that for any other player. So it was kind of a, a unique moment in time for me, I guess. But, for sure. So yeah. we know about the black, what else you got? Let's see yeah, some man. cards, man. I'll show you some. So one of the other objectives with this PC, just to be aware is I then decided I wanted 13 one of ones cause he was drafted 13th. So I'll kind of go in order oh, of, of 13 down to one um, because the number one is my big reveal that I've not shown anyone but you. Sweet. So, and I just got it. So I would say number 13 uh, is from Chronicles. I think it's an underrated set. Uh, this is the one-on-one -on -one base out of there. Nice. Uh, it graded mint, but I don't really mind about that as much. I just think it's cool you know a lot of people say hey why even grade one of ones um i kind of hear that but i like the case for it yeah for sure you know um number 12 i love this be, countdown you're such a showman i, I got it. you would be the emergent out of prism oh that's cool kind of an underrated set but they make this one every year which is really cool oh yeah um, and got that one really early on like most of my big things came out before he really took off and kind of had that playoff run last year. So that was number 12. I would say oh, it starts to get tough, man. You're ranking them on the fly for us. I love this. Yeah, I haven't done this before. Um, number 11 is a one-of-one -one from NT. Nice. Uh, the edges are just brutal on these, <laughs> but uh, this one's pretty cool. This one came from Canada. Uh, super, super nice guy. Everyone starts to know you're like the fan and you get DMs all over the place. So yeah. that one was really cool. Nice. Uh, number 10. It's got to be the tag. So he has five one of ones out of NT. Mm -hmm. And that one's actually the tag. So you get the engineered logo on there. That's cool. Number nine. Opulence. Oh, nice. I've never seen that one. So these, man, oh, man, they must have sent these to their house, the guys' houses, because they just got beat up, and the foil's brutal. I didn't even want a grade on it. I was just like, just put it in case <laughs> for me. It's like a BAGS-6 so, or something. Oh, uh, I don't even want to know. I, I didn't even want to know. <laughs> like, they had a review for it, and I'm like, don't even show me. Just, <laughs> just make it authentic. I don't care. <laughs> Uh, next up, and they're kind of building up now, man. So hopefully you're ready. I'm ready. Next up would be the other opulence. I mean, this is the RPA. That's a cool um, looking card, man. But the the corner is just jacked. <laughs> but super cool. Ten auto though. Yeah. That's but ex expensive, expensive product when it came out. So I kind of think long term, honestly the base cards out of that will be pretty important. Nice. Um, each guy only has like 79 is what the base is. So it's like and a high-end product? What's that? It's more of like a high-end kind of product. 
Yeah, it was like a foil-based product, but it reminded me of like a lot of the earlier stuff in collecting, um, yeah. where they didn't come out of the pack perfect, which I like. You know, it's actually hard to get a good grade, right. which some people get pissed about, but it's like, well, hey, <laughs> they actually handled these, so right, right. Uh, next up, so where are we? That's three, six. All right. Next up, I'm gonna go here. So this is out of Crown Royale. Ooh, the black crystal. And that's his black crystal. Sick. So that one's pretty cool. This one kind of stinks though. It was an RCR 9.5, and then when they slabbed it, they apparently didn't like the way it was reviewed. <laughs> yeah, so tell, tell the audience about that for those that don't know about RCR and the fact that it's not guaranteed. Yeah, so kind of a part of the fun of it, but uh, I enjoy RCR because it gives me a chance to just process 100, 150 at a time um, for myself, for others. Um, and they'll give you the n numerical grade, right? They won't tell you the subs. Um, so meaning centering, corners, edges, surface, but they'll just give you the, the 9.5. Um, but when you send it in, sometimes the other reviewer in Dallas will say, hey, edges are really an 8.5, not a 9, uh, or whatever the case may be. And in this case, it appears, because everything else is 9.5, it appears as edges went from a 9 to a 9.5. So mm. I can live with it. Um, you know, you can always sub it again, but it's a one of one, so I don't really care. Right. Um, next up, I, I think we need a drum roll when you actually show that. I'll do, I'll edit like a, um, I'll edit something in. <laughs> yeah. Next up will be this one. I picked this up at Nationals last year. Dang. So that's out of NT. I just think top product, logo, kind of yeah. cool. That's the first year of the Nike jerseys, right? It was his rookie year? Yep. So there's something so cool. Year. Yeah. But he's an Adidas guy, so I don't know if he likes it too much. No. <laughs> uh, next up is got to be this guy. Nice. Look of the lottery. Um, just super cool. All black. One of one there on the back. Um, super clean card. Super neat. And also Prism, obviously. So yeah, for sure. I think you can't go wrong with, with Panini and Prism. We're getting to the big ones, dude. We're getting to the big ones, man. The final four. <laughs> All right. This is hard. This one, because these are so cool. So this is the Nebula. Oh, nice. And they just, I mean, it's hard to see on camera, but they're so, so beautiful. What's the story on the Nebula? I, I just kind of recently heard, of, heard about them. Tell us what that is and what sets they come out of. So typically... Well, now they put it in Prism, too. So most of their Prism-based stuff seems to kind of have this now. Um, but the Nebula is the one-of-one of, one of Spectra from last year, from 1718. And it's just got this cool galactic kind of look with purples and blues, and it's also got kind of the the Prism vibe going on, too. Um, so just aesthetically pleasing. I honestly think long-term Spectra is kind of a, a, a dead product, honestly. But um, the Nebulas, I think, will always matter because they're just – if you can get a one-of-one one of your favorite player, I mean, that in, in itself is pretty amazing. But to have this look – I mean, I would argue this set could almost be out of five and there would still be demand long-term mm. because uh, it just has vibes of some of the older stuff that is hot now. Yeah, for so, sure. It's like the one-of-one one galactic kind of. Yeah. It kind of has that vibe. But it's – I don't know. Most of the other stuff out of Spectra is too crazy, too much going on, too in my forced, opinion. Yeah. yeah. But that one just has like a very distinguished look to it. So nice. I like that one. All right. Next up, man. This was actually pulled by Firehand. Um, and then by way of several folks, it, it found its way to me. I never thought I'd get this one. Um, this is the Silhouette. Um it's a nine, but they're thick cards. They're they're tough, tough grades, and they did them in person too. So on card, ten auto, um, super super cool. I would rank this as probably one of his top three rookies in my opinion. Dang, um, top five for sure. Is that the same set as the Black Crystal, the Crown War Royal? Yep. Nice. Yeah, the same one as that. Um, I would say 
that like out of all the releases, Crown is probably because of the silhouettes and the Black Crystal probably a top five rele- release for them. Okay. So um, what's the what's the the draw on that on that one right there, or what's like the silhouette? Is that you said it's kind of like a a really sought after thing? What what's the draw? Well, it's been to my knowledge, it's been in a couple of different sets over the years, but it's always had that same design where he's like offset and his jersey's behind it yeah and so i don't know it's just it seems to be a chase that a lot of people like and then i think the most unique part about him honestly is you have the one of one right here but his next level to prime there's only 25 so if you think about that for a second rookies only have 26 desirable silhouette cards Mm -hmm. as a rookie yeah of any player and I think that in and of itself is a draw. Um, they obviously have the other edition that's to 199, I think, something like that. Um, but that's kind of just the basic jersey, no patch going on. Gotcha. Uh, but in terms of the higher end rookies of, of players, I, I'm, you're hard pressed to find, in my opinion, things that have 26 or less of, of something. So that so. one's pretty pretty big for Luca, I'm guessing. Oh, huge. Yeah. yeah. I don't. Was the one of one pulled of him? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't track enough of it. I I honestly do my older, incredible and epic sets, and then I started 08, 09. I'll show you some of that in a little bit after this. Um, and then Donovan. It's funny, like your focus is just hone in. So yeah. I couldn't tell you the first thing about most of these guys this year. <laughs> is yeah. that bad? No, I mean I I know very little about Panini. I'm you're teaching me new stuff here. Oh, nice. Yeah. So kind of learned it through him. So we're in the top three, man. I think uh, the next one, and I mentioned it earlier, the Black Prism. <laughs> that's kind of like the key card at this point. There's like, you know, that's just the big card. Yeah, I, I think you could make an argument that this is 1A or 1B of any player. Um, you know, not just saying it because I, I have it for him. I feel blessed to have this one. But um, I don't know. It's... There's just such a draw to Prism product, as you know. And then to have a one-of-one out of the hobby issue of anyone is kind of a big deal, I think. So I would say out of like modern collecting today, this is 1A or 1B, with the other one being the Logo Man from NT. Yeah. So... It's kind of cool that the the modern chase is like a one-of-one. You know, it's just like... It's a pretty cool concept. Whereas back when we were kids and younger, it's like the big chase was something that that a lot of kids would have, and then it kind of got more and more rare. And now it's like one of one. It's like one card. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Well, and it's that's the coolest part about going through these. And this kind of brings me back to the art point that I was talking about earlier. Um, so, like, I've certainly let a lot of his one of ones pass that you know were on eBay or something like that. I don't have to have them all. That's not the objective. But it is really cool to look at these and go, as a fan, as a collector, you know, it's it's in my PC and, and this is my guy, you know. And so that concept of the one of one is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I think it's overdone a little bit with how loose it's thrown around sure. because not all one of ones are created equal, um, you know. But of the key ones uh, from the key sets, I think it's it's a pretty important thing. Yeah. I mean, we can all kind of like agree on what the the true one of ones are, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, because you, I mean, shoot. There's how, how many products are there anymore? I don't even know. It's hard to keep track, and they all 30. have, yeah, dozens of one of ones, right? Yeah. So, I think it's about the cornerstone products that people will remember. Sure. And I think modern collecting in basketball, and and I'm no total expert or anything, but I think modern collecting is more about, um kind of those premium four or five products. And I don't mean premium in price, but Prism, right? Um, in my opinion, Crown's up there, NT in terms of premium, premium. Uh, and then I think Optic took the leap this year, big time. Yep. Um, and then outside of that, like it's debatable. There's a bunch of others that are right there. But there's a bunch of key insert sets they've done a good job with that show up in different sets throughout. And I think those become super desirable regardless of where they're found. Yep. So that was number one or you got another one? No, that was uh, that was number two. Okay, we got the big reveal. Yeah, the big reveal, man. So uh, all the way from South Korea, 
the uh, Logo Man 101. <laughs> so nasty. <laughs> so that one is like my pride and joy. Jeez, man. Um, I mean, I can. I mean, I'm not a painting guy, but I can tell the difference between like that 101 versus you know other stuff. Like the Logo Man kind of obviously stands out a lot. Yeah. And that's this is crazy. Nice auto too. Yeah, he did a full one on there. It's it's pretty clean. That's the number one man. And uh, cr- crazy, crazy story with that one. Honestly, um, it was pulled before the product was even released. What? Yeah. So they did the first of the off the line boxes. They shipped them, and it was pulled in South Korea before hobby even went live hmm. so they knowing are they willingly putting some of these logo mans into the first off the line products i mean that's debatable no one will say but in the past couple of years and first off the line it's been pretty interesting what's come out of some of the beginning stuff um i don't know you know and i don't want to speculate that they know or don't know i don't think that's fair um but it but it is curious that some of the bigger names end up in there and like the Tatum hasn't even shown up yet to my knowledge yeah. out of that product. I know there's like some bounties and stuff going around for that one. Yeah. Which is crazy. But, uh, I don't know. I mean, they might tell you it's just random. I don't want to start a conspiracy theory, so <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so the, but the, I know that, go, ahead. go ahead. No, go. I was going to say, I know that it, it was, it, it came out before and, and obviously the collection was like ramping up at that point. Right. And I was just like, well, I never thought I'd get that one anyway. So <laughs> whatever. Um, but then the, the crazy part of the story is that none of his stuff got redeemed right away because it was literally the redemption card. And it's kind of cool. I have the original redemption too. Oh, that's cool. So that was pulled this exact one. And um, at any rate, it, it came out and they weren't redeeming them. So the gentleman that had pulled it um, just decided not to scratch it and kind of hold it because, you know, that's one you don't want to enter and have a replacement come out in four to eight months, (laughs) uh, as you can imagine. Uh, So as a result, held it. um, Apparently during the first signing last August, uh, that one card got damaged. Um, So that card got damaged uh, they couldn't send it out that way. That's kind of how the story goes. Um, and so it had to be, you know, redone, basically. Um, and get they had to get his signature again, too. Wow. And um, long story short, they finally completed it with some of the run from this year and uh, was fortunate to finally get it a couple of weeks ago. So you bought it. How did you buy it? You bought it as the well, redemption? Yeah, so I bought it as the redemption. And that's where the story gets a little crazy because – in my opinion, if that card would have been redeemable earlier, um, the gentleman probably would have redeemed it and it would have been sold off somewhere Yeah. because it would have existed and you would have been able to hold it and actually exchange it. Um, so the fact that it wasn't able to be redeemed kind of played to my favor because there was still kind of a risk factor to it, in my opinion. Because mm-hmm. um, what if it never got made? I mean, we don't know um, players anymore can wake up one day and say, hey, I'm not going to sign my stuff Khalil Mack style for, you know, five years or at all, uh, or it disappeared or right. whatever the case may be. So there was still kind of that weird feeling inside where you're like, I really want to just hold this. <laughs> uh, I want it to get made. And um, it finally, finally came through. But it was interesting because I ended up neg- negotiating on it for, I don't know, two and a half, three months back and forth. Um, from South Korea to to here in Denver, um, put a deal together and finally got it, and then had the other weight of you know getting it in January of this year and not knowing when it would be made. So you just got it recently, right? In the last couple of weeks. Yep, two two weeks ago, maybe a week ago. Um, so you had to wait just, like four months. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and not knowing if it's going to be made. I mean, it's not like you know you have any contact to know that. You just kind of. <laughs> pray and hope and it worked out so but you kind of had contact a little bit yeah i mean you can shoot emails back and forth especially on something that big um and kind of know that 
hey, is this hopefully going to get made? Yeah, you know, he's good about signing, but he's kind of busy right now. Yeah, playing basketball. So, <laughs> yeah, but um, it's still nerve-wracking though, right? I yeah, mean, for sure. I'm sure the guy gets bothered 24-7 about signing autographs. So right. Right. It's probably the last thing he wants to do when he comes home from work, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, I meant you had more direct contact than that. Didn't didn't you have a, a story to tell us about that? Oh yeah, man. So um, I didn't have it in time when I when it finally came together, but uh, was able to to actually meet Donovan. And uh, the cool part about the uh, the black one is he held that one and the. Uh, and the other logo man at the same time so he's actually held those two um and i'm kind of funny like i i didn't want his autograph or anything i just wanted him to see my joy for collecting his cards yeah yeah <laughs> um and he was so gracious and and nice about it um kind of got lucky because went to a game in denver you never know if guys are going to come out afterwards. Luckily, have a couple couple of friends here that are so nice. I won't put them on blast here, but so nice to kind of let me stay after, um, and and hang out. You know, kind of in the family friend section. Um, everyone had cleared out that night. There was literally like five people left in myself, uh, in my fiance, and it's kind of like WWE. You have like the big curtain. And you don't know who's going to come out next. <laughs> um, so it was already like a cool night because Royce O'Neal came out. Uh, a couple of the Nuggets came out. Uh, Kyle Korver came out. Um, and you don't want to bother them because they're seeing their friends, their family, their whatever. You want to respect kind of that, that privilege of it. Um, but, you know, you can give them a little bit of small talk. Like I remember three or four years ago, Draymond Green came out. I went to Michigan State. He went to Michigan State. So I go, hey, Draymond, go green. And he goes, go white, baby. <laughs> so you get some of that now and then. Um, but other than that, like I don't want to bother him for, for autographs and, and things like that. Typically just want a picture with some of my favorites. Um, but at any rate, we're like the final five people left. And I'm like, it's not going to happen, right? Like just going to have to wait for another year because they only come here two times a year. But I go every single time, you know. So, uh, And those are the only two games I go to anymore. I just don't have – don't have time for, for going that often. But, uh, long story short, the, the four other people waiting. Um, so I, I guess there were six cause it was my fiance as well, but the four other people waiting, um, my friend goes, Hey, uh, he's the one that works there. He goes, Hey, who, who are you guys waiting for? And they go, Oh, our friend Donovan. And I'm like, Oh man, no way. Like what are the odds, right? <laughs> At this point, like the bus should be going. It's a road game. They want to go home. Right. They're still waiting, waiting for Donovan. So he, um, sure enough, like two minutes later, there he is, like three feet away. Uh, goes over. He's got like a sparkling water. Um, you know, after the game, food, plate of food. Goes and sits with his friends, talks for a while, uh, and actually sees my sweatshirt. Uh, and he was wearing the same one that night, which was so so random, like. You know, he gets all the gear and has stuff that's not even out yet, but he's wearing the same one. And as he's talking to his friends, he looks over at me and he gives me a head nod, like, I got you next. You're up next. You know? <laughs> that's sweet. And I'm like, this is crazy. <laughs> so he takes a picture on the court with his friends, has his plate of food, has his water, just walks over. And he's like, how you doing? I'm like, great. I'm Ross. He's like, I'm Donovan. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm like, oh, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> like, in that moment, no matter how you know, balanced you are and whatever you do, like that giddy moment of being a little kid. Um, you know, even though I'm a grown man, you, you just, I can't even describe it. Like to me, that's the coolest part of collecting too, is experiences like that, just going to games. Right. Um, so to be able to have that, I was probably red in the face, uh, and, and all that my fiance, Sophia lover to death had, had the wherewithal to pull her phone up and just start taping it. Um, and she got like 45 seconds of the clip. Um, he ended up staying and talking for almost three minutes. Um, just talking about life and, you know, how excited he was for the season and, and all the things going on. And then I was able to kind of show him some of the pictures and had some of the cards with me. Um, kind of had the thought ahead of time that what I really wanted was the picture. So that was the picture I got with him with the two cards. Um, didn't want to bother him for, for an autograph or anything like that, but made him a little envelope ahead of time 
um, of some some additional cards that I thought he would like uh, that were graded, uh, and said, "Hey, man, these these are for you. Um, these are you know prism cards. This is what this means." He thought it was super super cool. Kind of asked about the grading and that kind of thing, um, and then showed him the Instagram. You know where I've got different pictures and you know how some of the cards came from Hong Kong and you know Singapore and South Korea, yeah. uh, and he was just blown away by it. Like, I think when they sign them, they don't really put much thought into it other than, hey, they won a thousand signatures today. Um, and I think that's one of the misconceptions in our hobby as a whole. Yeah. You know, like how collectible these things are and how important certain ones are. So what did he say about the, like the one-on-ones? Did he, you showed him the prison black, right? Yeah. I said, this is one of your most, you know, most important ones. And he's like, this one right here. I'm like, yeah. And, you know, it came all the way from Hong Kong. And at that point, he goes, no way. And he kind of leans back, goes, thanks for being amazing. Gives me a handshake. <laughs> and that's what's in the video. That's what he's saying right there. Because um, I think he was just floored that someone would care enough to to collect his stuff, you know, yeah. let alone hunt it down from, you know, parts around the globe. So it was super, super cool. And uh, I think the fun part about it now is, you know, I think a, a lot of times, it's easy to chase, you know, autographs and things like that. But I like those experiences because if I ever cross paths again, um, you can kind of, you know, bring that up. And there was like a moment and not in some weird way, right? I'm not some like raving crazy fan, but um, it still builds a story. It kind of builds a, a connection to, you know, that, that you collect or this is what is fun for you. So right. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I feel like uh, most most uh, collectors, especially PC guys, we kind of have this like uh, idolized way that we collect the cards, and then it's kind of it's kind of cool to just see it kind of come together and like remind you why you're doing it, like the actual person that's there. You know, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, big time. And I think the other piece too is it was really cool, more so to share the um, the joy that that this brings. You know, I don't think he realized like. He obviously realized that someone collects these, right? But um, to kind of see it all come together, I think it was kind of neat for him too to go, "Whoa! Like this is what all those things are they send me, and like people collect these." And I had no idea that ones were worth more than others, right? I mean, you kind of just probably think that they're all kind of the same um, or similar, right? Because it's more about the number of what they need. So. Sure. I don't know. It was a really neat experience, like super, super blessed to, to be able to do that. And uh, like I said, it kind of builds a fun story. Who knows? You know, maybe years down the road, be able to show the picture again and say, hey, you know, can I take a picture with you with, with the picture? <laughs> and you can show them the logo man now. You've completed your journey. Yeah, I've completed the journey, right? Did you so, tell him that you had the redemption? Yeah, I told him and I was like, hey when they have you sign this uh, one with the logo on it. <laughs> Think of me. <laughs> handle, handle with care, right? Too Ross, too Ross. <laughs> oh, you're like, please do the, the inscription, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, but like I said, I think, um, I don't think they spell out like what's what when they put them in front of those guys, you know? So it's probably like still luck of the draw. How cool would it have been if you were like, look, it's going to look like this. This is the one, and when you get it, just write to Ross. And if you had the one hundred and one logo man with the inscription to yourself, it's like Back to the Future. Like, (laughs) how crazy would that be? (laughs) That'd be so nuts. That'd be nuts. It was funny the way it came together, though. But uh, he's he's super, super incredible. I obviously am super super high on him uh, as a basketball player, but um, even more a fan of just kind of who he is as a person. So I like the way he carries himself. That's awesome, dude. I love that story so much. Yeah. Um, well, we'll come off the high of that, I guess, and just kind of hit on the next thing. Um, so you kind of uh, started with, you know, uh, your childhood, kind of the cards from that era. Then you jumped into, like, these really cool upper deck, really iconic upper deck autograph sets of all these legends. And now you collect a lot of Panini. And I don't have a lot of Panini guys on. So I kind of yeah. want you to, to describe like what it is you like about Panini, what you think they're doing right, um, and just what it is that kind of has, has drawn you into that. Yeah, I think, um, like I said, I think their four or five cornerstone sets are fantastic. Um, I think Prism Golds um, are like the best thing going. 
Um, I think Galactics are right there. Um, and then I think, obviously, the rookie card to have is is Logoman, um, whether they're the auto version or not. Um, so I'd say I'm probably most drawn to that. Obviously, with Donovan, I had no choice but to, to collect uh, Panini. Um, I would say sometimes they put a lot of filler stuff out there. There's a lot of additional sets that could probably do without. Um, and my only caution is I really hope with Zion coming this year, Prism doesn't turn into like quadrupled um, because there's going to be like a, a yearning to do that, right? And I understand the business side of it too. Um, but I really, really hope that it, it there's some level of rarity, some level of exclusiveness to, you know, the prisms. Because if he has like 50 prisms next year, it's going to be crazy. Um, I think even for Donovan, he has 26 prisms total between fast break and regular. Um, and I have all of them but one. The only one I don't have is the, the fast break black one of one. Um, may never see it. It may never come out because it's probably still in a box. I don't think people open it up a lot. But that's kind of my case in point. It's like prism, prism, the hobby, the golds, the standard, you know, black, gold, amazing stuff um, is enough. And when you kind of have like fast break and all these additional offshoots, that worries me a little bit. Um, so that would be my only watch out. Um, but in terms of like their key core products, back to the point, I think nothing's better than than the prism golds, the galactics, and then logo men for sure. And then some of the others, I mean, you'll see a lot of guys collect these. I think they're fantastic. They're the draft numbers. Yeah, those are cool. And so a lot of that stuff, especially for veterans that's numbered to like five or six, you know, depending on what it is, um, are really, really cool too. Um, but overall, I think what they do well is promote the, the sports that they do. I mean, no doubt about it. I think they've helped grow the hobby for sure. Um, I think they're very generous in terms of trying to make it right with collectors and, and things like that. I mean, you'd hear stories from other manufacturers where, hey, we're not making that tough, tough luck. And I know there's this whole thing going on with them right now about redemptions and things like that. Uh, and I think there's a lawsuit. Um, can't really speak to that, but I, I've always felt like they've dealt with me fairly, um, you know, in terms of turnaround time on some of those things and more so just the way they try and approach it for, for the collector. So I don't know. Those are probably my biggest pros for them. Yeah. I used to always get on the like overprinting, like you're, like you're talking about, but the stuff that you say is the cornerstone stuff. And I think that we all agree on those have like a set print already and you can't yeah. produce except for the silver prisms, I think obviously, uh, yeah. but like the golds are always 10, the blacks are ones, the, the, uh, RPAs are 99. So it's, it's as much as they can like overprint stuff around it. Like you can still focus on the same and keep the value in those areas. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, even as someone who doesn't collect as much panini on your end, um, you kind of get drawn to some of those prism ones though, right? Of course, yeah. I mean, they stand out for sure. And, you know, even like this year, um, you know, not overly difficult to get, but it's just beautiful. Yeah, it's a great card. And so, I don't know. I mean, to me, that stuff's really, really quality. My only worry, once again, is I think they made like 30 some prisms this year, right? 35 for each player. Uh, and that starts to become a bit much because – you can't chase all those and yeah. uh, maybe you're not supposed to, but it, it just becomes too much. And I almost think the lineage of it, like you said, the golds, the blacks, um, silvers, obviously those are the cornerstone ones that connect year to year to year. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes I think some of the additional offshoots and colors um, honestly have, have a negative return. It just kind of boosts up the main ones that are shorter um, and unified throughout the years. For sure. To be honest. I mean, I definitely have an eye for some of their stuff. I like, obviously, like Galactics, and I really liked Optic this year. I've been talking about about that a lot. Their Optic stuff is really nice. Oh, I'm 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 a huge fan of Optic. I think um, it's got the Topps Chrome feel, which I love. Um, Just nice action shots. Like they've kind of gotten back to the roots of Topps Chrome. 
Yeah, action shots. And easy to understand parallels, too. Like this year, the green was out of five, which seems to be kind of standard for them. Um, the one-of-one one vinyls, have you seen those? Oh, yeah. They're so cool. Um, kind of has that chrome super fractor look. Super fractor, yep. Um, I, I think actually, those... Yeah. I had a shot at the LeBron, but... I, Did you? I didn't get it. No. That, that'll that probably, like, be an important one someday, you think? Oh, yeah. It's his first, like, Laker, like, super fractor, you know? Did you get any from that side of him? Uh, I have, like, a buttload of the silvers. Yeah. I ended up getting... Oh, what? Yeah. Hold on a second. Oh. I'll have to message you after this, sir. Yeah? That's a cool one. What's the centering on it? 8.5? Yeah. The centering they, on those are... Did you saw that one that was a 9.5 centering? I know. They went for like six grand just because of their, uh, the rest are bad centering. Yeah. You know what's funny with this, though, is 9.5, 9.5, and 10. Um, I can live with the 8.5. I, I knew when I got it that it was thicker on the bottom. But there again... I think that's kind of the old school a little bit too, right? Like oh, yeah. they're not all cut perfect deal with it. Yep. Um, and then it makes the chase for the perfect one a little bit more interesting. Yeah, I think so. Because he's probably only going to have, what, one or two maybe? Yeah. We've, we've um, only seen one so far. Yeah. And then I know you're a fan of that one too. i kind of been a homer a little bit. I just don't like the pose. It just kind of bothers me. No, I know. But I, I think, um, to your point a minute ago, I think his Laker stuff – will matter no matter what he does there sure it's still a moment in time with arguably one of the best sports franchises out there for sure um what's your what's your uh i guess you can talk about the investment stuff if you want you don't have to but what's like your your hope for the future of the hobby yeah my hope is that uh people can keep having fun doing it that's that's a good that's a good and <laughs> Like honestly, it's yeah. gonna sound so silly. I get, I get really worried when I hear investment, 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 investment. Um, I think high grade stuff, cornerstone guys, vintage of certain things, without a doubt, right? I mean, one of your favorite episodes that you had was, uh, one of my favorite that you had was with, uh, I think Brent from from PWCC. Um, you know, brings up a ton of valid points, and I agree with most, but. The problem is, is like the layman person out there, the person that we need to to join the hobby for the fun of it, the camaraderie. Um, you know, if they're only joining for the money, like the Gary V aspect, right? Yeah. Um, that concerns me because I don't know. A lot of this stuff, if you track it through time, like nothing new under the sun. A lot of it kind of just holds, goes flat, uh, and kind of is what it is. Yeah. Right. There's there's like a few things that really, really take off um, because there is true rarity there, right? And I think we see that right now with Giannis Silvers. Um, I think it's valid. I mean, how many Silvers were made Giannis's rookie year yeah. from Prism? Do you know? It's probably like 250, 300-ish range. Yeah. And, and there was really just hobby and like retail was maybe blasters, and then, like, maybe one other hobby release, but they were really tough to get. Yeah. Um, and if you look at the pop report for that right now, PSA-wise, there's only 54 out there, silvers, in a, in a PSA 10. That's low. Um, which is crazy. So if Giannis is really the next big thing, which, you know, it's debatable, but he looks pretty good. Yeah. Um, is 54 enough for the whole demand? No. No. I mean, it shoots through the roof, right? So my only concern is, like, with Zion coming next year, oh, yeah. this, all this investment talk, and then they make 10,000 silvers. Yeah. Um, those silvers are not created equal. And I think we saw that this year with Luca a little bit, too, to yeah. be honest. And, like, the if there's only 10 golds and one black, uh, and then it kind of feels like everyone else is going to want silver, and if there's, you know, a billion of them, then it kind of really waters down the the draw into getting them yeah i mean i don't, I don't know i how, how many silvers do you think were made this year out of that behind you oh man i i want to say in the like definitely in the thousands right it feels like four or five thousand yeah that's a lot easy dude. 
easy. And so what makes me nervous is when people were chasing him, Luca, uh, earlier this year and paying for those with a premium, assuming they were truly, truly rare. Um, cause that's scary. I mean, if you don't know or don't have an idea or don't have some years to decide how many are out there, like if the pop report comes out for that and there's a thousand PSA tens, yeah, that should have a different valuation than 54. Sure. Of course. Um, you know, all, all day long. So I don't, I don't know. So my, my ultimate hope for the hobby is that people have fun with it. Um, you know, some of the most joy I get is, you know, being able to embrace the hobby, be engaged in the hobby. Um, obviously doing things like this, it, it feels like a golden ticket to be able to talk about it. I get excited about it. Um, cause I think everyday people get annoyed by the, the bantering of sports cards. So <laughs> yeah. you know, I want more people in the hobby to have more of an outlet, right. but, uh, with, with good intentions too, sure. because if people end up with a garage full of 1980s, uh, and early nineties stuff, that's worth $5 a box now. Sure. Um, that doesn't help the hobby either. Sure. If they spent thousands on it. Yeah. Um, I mean, people have, have seen me talk more and more about the investment and I've gotten some, some negative flack for that. I think rightfully so in some aspect, uh, my, my take on it initially and currently is that, um, it's kind of the thing that draws a lot of people in and we kind of needed that, like we kind of needed a little bit of it to, to try to get the word out. Cause that's kind of the only thing that catches people's attention that know nothing about it. But to your point, like, we get them to stay by them having fun and actually enjoying it. And I've seen Adam talk about this a lot, 27 guy. He says, and I agree, um, you know, we draw people in sort of with the investment and then we, then that's our opportunity to get them to stay by hooking them into it with look, look how fun this is. Look how awesome it is. Look at the people that are here. Look at the knowledge that we have within the hobby. Like we, we can cover every single card that you can ever imagine with knowledge and understand everything. Uh, so it's bringing them in, educating them, showing them the knowledge, getting them to stay because it actually is genuinely fun. So I think it's it's a little bit of everything. You know, it's not like we don't want no investors. We don't want all pure collectors, right? We we want to sort of like build this like healthy oh, growth for sure. No, absolutely. And I and I look. I think there is an investment arm of this. Like I don't want the takeaway to be that I don't believe in that. But I think I think you're the first part of it has to be the joy. Yep. Within, obviously, you want to make money on the, the cards that you put big money into. Um, but the joy should, in my opinion, be able to override just making money or not making money on a card. Yeah. And I know that sounds silly, but you know, if you're if you're only my only fear is people that jump in all the way and, and are only investing in sports cards. Um, that's scary. And, and like, I just want to be a public service announcement for that a little bit too. Please don't do that. Huh? Like, please don't do that. Yeah. Don't, don't put your life savings into this. Buy an index fund with low to no fees. Do this for fun. As you learn, buy ones that you think are sustainable and good, but also don't get caught in the hype mill every single year. Yeah. I mean, we've seen this every year with the hobby. There's always hype. There's always the new Trey Young, Luca. Are they fantastic? Absolutely. But you can't chase all those and pay six, seven, eight hundred for a silver prism, and now they're trading at three hundred. That's like Bitcoin stuff if you put too much into it. Yeah. Um, be intelligent about it. And that's my only watch out for people. Is there money to be made in some of that? Sure. Um, but understand that market for it, understand how many are out there. Um, do it for the joy of collecting something first. Yeah. Um, and then if the money follows, great. But usually the money follows in life and anything if you do things that make you happy because then you enjoy it and you know more about it and you research it. So yep. that's kind of the connection in my mind. But I have my like training course series thing and I my number one key to being successful if you are looking to make money is that you have to have genuine interest. You have to. Because yep. you're going to be better at everything, every part of it. You're going to understand it more. You're going to dive it, dive deeper into it. It's just like it's the number one most important thing. Sure. And so with that in mind, you've probably done pretty well on the cards that you bought because you're genuinely interested in why you're putting the kind of money you're putting into some of them. Uh, and, and then you know um, because you care yeah. that there's probably something behind it. There's some substance there. Um, so I think you're absolutely right. And I think the other thing too though is – 
we also live in a society that wants to potentially jump into, you know, um, something because it's hot, fresh, new. Um, I think we saw this with, we've seen it with a ton of investment things. I won't call one out in particular, but you know, the, the fly by night flash in the pan, do this and sit on a couch and it'll make you 10 X doing nothing. Yeah. I don't want sports cards to be that either. Yeah. So. It can't be. I mean, you're, you could get burned. I mean, if you just jump in and you don't know what you're doing, you're just going to be buying Zion. Honestly, like if you came in next year and you didn't know what you were doing, all you'd see is Zion and you think, Oh, this is the thing to buy. Yep. And that may be true. You you know you might be able to make some money if you play it just perfectly. But in general, there's guys that have been around a lot longer, and they're gonna they're gonna beat you at it. So you gotta really like focus and find what you like instead. Oh, for sure, for sure. And not only that, um, you know, don't don't be afraid to to get ones that are cheaper just because you enjoy building the set. I think that's a lost art a little bit too, right? Yeah. Build an insert set for, you know that's kind of a chase, little short printed, but not too expensive. I always tell people that when they're starting, um, pick a 40 card set that's kind of hard to get, one per case, something like that, but you can buy them for five or 10 bucks, 20 bucks, and get the thrill of hunting for that for a year, year and a half. Yeah, for sure, and that's great. Whatever it takes. Yep. And um, to me, that builds like patience and discipline mm -hmm. uh, and understanding of the markets because even when I got back into it hardcore in 2012, 2013, you don't know what you know now then. Um, otherwise, you would have bought Giannis stuff, right? But you do it for the love, and that's why it ends up, you know, you, you end up with some of the wrong things from those eras, right, or those things. But to me, that's a sign of a true collector too a little bit. Yeah. Because um, it's, I don't know, it's easy to just, only chase the money and things, but sure. I think you have to do it for joy. I even said that to a couple of friends with that were jumping in, and they wanted to just buy a bunch of Prism and start ripping. And I was like, "Don't hold on, Let's yeah. slow down, yeah. wait for Optic." Honestly, like if you're looking to rip and you're looking to figure out how this works and what's out there, just wait for Optic. It's the third of the price. Yep, it's just as good looking. And I just I happened to get lucky where it actually was, you know, as good looking this year. Um, so it's just little things like that, you know. Yeah, but no, I look. Don't mistake it. I, I want as many people to come in that want to come in. I think it's a fabulous community as a whole. I think it gets a bad rap now and then in terms of some of the things going on out there, and we won't dive into those things here. But uh, you know, as a whole, I've met some of the nicest, most genuine people uh, in this hobby that truly look out for each other. Um, and to me, that's a huge, huge part of it too. Yeah. After the joy and the fun, um, I can't tell you how many times I've had that random DM from someone that found something you were looking for, um, already has it in the mail to you, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And wants nothing in return. Yeah. I mean, that's crazy. And and you don't even really know each other that well. You just kind of know that you're both really into this thing, right? Right. Um, I think that's the cool connection too. For sure. Well, I have, yeah. uh, when there's something that I want, uh, some of my friends know about or whatever and if it hits eBay I literally get like 20 text <laughs> messages even if I've seen it my eBay yeah. alerts are going off but they still all 20 of them text me at once and I'm like wow this is crazy <laughs> yeah it, like how cool is that though it's awesome yeah it's fantastic like they're looking out for you and I think the coolest part about that too is like you might be so excited about whatever that particular thing is um, but to other people it doesn't mean anything right, right. and that's why right. they're like firing it off to you so it's there's so many niches to, to be in yeah. that make it super fantastic too. Um, and with all that in mind, I have a few other things to show you. I mean, certainly. Yeah, just start firing off cards, man. Yeah, I'm not a stranger to putting putting some sta substantial oh, wow. you know, um, things. So, But to me, those are one of the things where I wouldn't say jump right in and buy one of these. I would say learn the hobby, learn what they are, learn what they mean to like collecting and then find your entry point at the right place. Yep. This particular one, the thing I love about it, is the story behind it. Uh, met a guy on Blowout, he was looking to buy his first house, um, and you know, trying to raise some money from selling a bunch of different cards. Had sent it into Beckett ahead of time, and we kinda had a you know contingent, hey, if it gets this, then that, and that sort of thing. Um, so the story behind that one is even cooler to me. You know, yeah. this individual was able to take this plus other sales and purchase his first house for his family. So that one's pretty cool. Um, and then obviously, 
if you're going to own a modern football card, um, I think that one's right up there, you know, within reach, right? I mean, obviously you see some of the contenders ones and, you know, there was a contenders out of a hundred that ended for like 450,000, um, a couple of months ago. Yeah. (laughs) So yeah, that's nowhere near that. Right. Right. But, uh, as an entry point base rookie, pretty, pretty cool. Um, told you I was a sucker for these, these epic sets. So building the whole thing Dang. in nine, five, those autos bubble over time. And so bright blue, beautiful, like the day he signed it, which I think is just fantastic. This set has so many amazing guys in it. My goodness that people don't even realize. And, and they're short printed even though they weren't numbered. So you kind of remember old school upper deck, right? They would just make six of a random one or only 10 or 30 or whatever, and that was it. But no one knew. They just couldn't find them. <laughs> so some of these are that one, like Bird too. How many, so how many of there are, sorry, how many of those are there compared to the Incredible base? Um. So there's like 26 or 27 epics, I want to say, in the base set. Oh, sorry, uh, for one player. Like, let's just pick a player. How many would they have in the print? Oh, that's tough. I know, like, the Wilt. I'll just use the Wilt as an example. Please. The Wilt has 229 in Incredible and has, like, 129 in Epic. Okay, so there you go, about twice as rare. Yeah, so if you were to collect, the Epic one of Wilt is worth more or kind of perceived more and then obviously is rare by almost half but it's not nearly double the price so it's if it's some some little key thing that you can hone in on there if you're if you're after that kind of stuff you know it's like yeah it's not double the price but it's twice as rare yeah i mean look if, if you're ranking them and here's the crazy thing i'll show you some wilt here in a second if you are a collector of of wilt um he only has in and i may be off by a few so I, hopefully no one crucifies me here um, but he has less than 500 total autos on card. Um, and to my knowledge, only 479 ever. And he only has four. So he's got the incredible base, 229. Mm-hmm. He's got the epic base, 129. He's got 100 of the epic century. And then he's got 13 of the incredible gold. That's it. I'll do the math. You, math you, right you, you keep talking. If my math's right there, 479, which is just crazy. You said 129 of the epics? 129 epics, 229 incredible, 13, and then 100. 471. 471, yep. So I knew it was somewhere in there, but less than 500 for sure. I know that is a, is a guarantee. That's crazy, dude. Compared to Jordan, who's got how many autos? Who knows? LeBron, those guys have so... LeBron has more autographs on one card the sp authentic there's 500 of those yeah no it's crazy here's one of the other ones people rarely rarely see so this was definitely a short print from century legends that year the theory is 20 of these i've heard as low as six i think there's more than six i've seen more than six but dr j dang why why is that um it was just one of the guys they picked that year that they only made a few of um, so that was what I loved about the old school upper deck stuff, right? It's just like, for whatever reason, that was the SSP and it truly was. And so for set builders, it was like, there were only ever going to be 20 sets, Yeah, which is pretty cool. I wanted to point out also that these, these older guys, their autographs are freaking amazing. Amazing. <laughs> like man. They write I their wish, names out in cursive. I wish some of the young guys would take note. Yeah. It's um, a huge branding opportunity that they're missing. Yeah, because if you look at the old ones, the older guys, they realized back then that this would kind of live with them forever, that yeah. this was their name. And even Jordan has one of the most beautiful autos. Yeah. And it's always been pretty consistent. So someone early on told him, hey, you're going to sign a lot of stuff, but make sure you protect it because it's who you are, right? And at some point, this is going to be really, really important. So that's my only knock. I, I love Donovan Mitchell, but he kind of like, he he fell off here. I'll give you two examples really, really quick. I mean, they signed so much stuff, though. He started there. Oh, wow. Okay. Which was amazing. So I have like a couple dozen of like those originals. And then it turns into 
that. Yeah. They just signed so much, right? I mean, they signed so many cards. Yeah. No, I feel for them. Um, if someone's going for the epic set, to me, that's the one over incredible. It just has, I mean, Allen Iverson, the guy you forget about, Oscar Robinson. Look how blue that thing is. My goodness. I know. Like the day it was signed. And then, <clears throat> like my pride and joys. God. So there, a nine. Those cards are so nice. And then we got a eight, five, two that I pulled out for you. So we got three of that one. This is still one of my favorites because it takes me back to the lunchbox days. And then I pulled one other one out for you today. 99, sweet. That's cool. Yeah, isn't that cool? Yeah. Thought it was kind of cool to see the. So which one's your favorite of all those wilts? Uh, well, it's going to be funny. It's the one that's probably the least rare, the incredible. Yeah. Because of the connection back to opening those packs. Ten centering, cool. Those are usually not perfectly centered. Yeah, that one for sure. And then it kind of transitioned into 08, 09, they did that set as well. So you know the there's one guy in there you like a lot. I don't have that one yet, Justin. You need that one. Justin. And I know Justin had a couple. I know. I message him like once a month, like, hey, you selling that yet? <laughs> he always says no. I pulled it out for you. Dude. Oh, man, that card is sick. It's the same. Can you put it side by side with one of the older ones so people can see kind of the. Yeah. How close it is to the original? Yeah, I like to line up all these all time greats together. That's so. Dude, put. Uh, LeBron and Oscar, that, that's a cool combo. Yeah, with the blue. Yep. Kind of show it. That's sick. Yeah, it's like the same exact thing, same design. Yeah, it was the only other year to my knowledge where they they did that. But here, here's what's crazy. I pulled one other one for you. That second set had Kevin Durant in it too, mm -hmm. but he never completed his cards because the transition to Panini happened. Okay. And then Al Horford as well. Never happened. Huh. Um, Kobe, they still had stickers left over. Yeah, that's like the weirdest, like most ominous card with the sticker on it. It's such a weird thing. It's bizarre. But a lot of these other old vets, Stockton, signed full. This is one of my favorites too, Magic. Oh, nice. I think, dude, I've never even seen that one. Yeah, that one's rare. So that was one of the ones like 08, 09, they did the same thing. Yeah. And it was Magic probably had 20, 25. The rarest one, you you may never see, Chris Paul. I've never seen that card before in my life. Yeah. Cool. He, only, he be, is believed to only have three or six ever. Wow. So that was kind of the... And then one of my other favorites growing up, man, so in the Kobe days, I was actually a fan of another high flyer back then. Any guesses? From the same, same era. Same rookie or same era? Or... Really close. Year after. But Kobe said it was one of the toughest guys he ever played coming through all those years. T-Mac. T-Mac. Those guys talk and, a lot now today. And, Whoa, and cool. that was, you don't see many of that one either. It was another one of the short ones there. This might be like my favorite set that I've seen on camera. This is cool. I love this set. It's so sick. I, I'm, only, I'm only missing three. Um, I think it's Dennis, the, the autos are sorry. The autos are so blue. I know. Isn't that cool? So who are you missing? Yeah, who are you missing? Dennis Rodman, Steve Nash, and Beasley. I love how you pause so that people could like make sure that you they know. Yeah, if you're out there. I'll put the words in my editing so that it's very clear what you need. <laughs> yeah. Well, the Beasley one is like cheap, but you can't find it for whatever reason. So I'm obviously a big Nash guy, so that's that's one i got to help you find. Yeah, Steve Nash, man. But yeah, a couple other Donovans for you if you got a moment. Just go for it. Um, so one of my other goals turned into trying to get every NT RPA that he has. So I completed that recently. Oh, sick. Um, so I got 
three of the base. It's hard to see. I got his 15. That's the uh, the first off the line one? Yeah. So that one came out of first off the line. Love, love, love that card. So I pulled that one out for you. This one's my favorite, though, out of everything I've shown. Why is that? It's got the Jazz logo ball, the okay. gold, Yep. and uh, out of 10. So it's kind of the gold prism aspect. Yeah. Um, but has that four color of the the ball. So with their logo, you're typically only going to get yellow and white. Yeah. So to get the green, yellow, white, and blue, kind of kind of cool. And then the main one. I couldn't believe they didn't put the better ones in this one. These are the greens. So that's like an emerald. The, yeah, it's a five. Nice. So it was funny because the patches and like the golds were actually better. <laughs> yeah. Which is kind of weird. I don't know. And then the, there's always, uh, just for people that don't know, including myself, it's always 99, 25, 15, 10, 5, 1. Yep. Got it. It's yep. the same well, every year. And the 15 was just recent. That's because uh, of first off the line. Yeah. But they changed it this year. It's going to be uh, first off the line is going to have out of 20. And, and then out of three. Yeah. So I don't know. But I, I think long term, when you think about NTRPAs of the best ones, it's usually the out of 10, yep. out of five. Yep. And then 99 is actually more important than most just because it's more attainable. Yeah. Um, you know, as a guy kind of blows up, right? Yeah. I don't right. know. That's great, dude. Um, well, we're, we're out of time. So any any last parting words of wisdom for everybody? Man, just uh, I said it earlier, but have, have fun with it, man. I mean, that's what it's all about. So set fun goals. Start small, like I said. Um, if you're just getting in, I think it can be infatuating. It's like a casino sometimes, right? You come in, you're like, oh, my gosh all this stuff <laughs> yeah i'm just gonna rip <laughs> like don't just rip calm down right take a chill pill uh loved your episode you did uh with your friend from work that's kind of taking it easy what do i want to buy i would advise that to anyone yeah um because look some of the stuff i showed today maybe it goes to zero maybe it doubles and i'm okay with either but you have to be at that place before you put money behind some of these things to, to understand what that is. Otherwise, the mass majority of it will go to zero, right? I mean, it's easy to buy everything. I mean, you, you got a lot of Darren Williams cards hanging around. You got a lot of, you know, number one, Greg Odin's uh, hanging around. You know, it's easy to buy anything and everything. So my advice would be have fun, slow down, understand what you're doing. And you said it best early on. Um, make sure you know what you want before you just go crazy with it and focus in on what it all means because it's ever changing and evolving. So have fun with it first and foremost. And don't forget to ask a lot of questions. There's so many great forums out there, your channel, um, you know, ton of great podcasts out there, ton of amazing things through blowout in the forums. Um, just reach out to people, you know, before you spend real money on some of these things. So, that would be my take. Perfect. I can't, I'm not going to add to it. So we're going to end it there. Thanks, man. Yeah. Thank you, man. See Appreciate you. it. See you at national. All right. We'll see you there.